What's up everyone, Sean Count Blagreth here with a book review, this time of, I believe it was a 2008 release, this is a 2010 reprint of uh, Bazillion Points uh, published this. This is uh, Only Death is Real, an illustrated history of Hellhammer and Early Celtic Frost, 1981 through 1985, written by Thomas Gabriel Fisher, also known as Tom G. Warrior, and Martin Eric Ain. Um, before I get started with this, I am a huge fan of Hellhammer, of course, big, big Hellhammer fan. I'm a big fan of Tom G. Warrior in general, and of course, early Celtic Frost, Emperor's Return, um, Morbid Tales. I'm missing two Megatherium because I want to get it on vinyl, but it's expensive. But I'm a big fan of everything Tom has done, and I had to get this book, and I finally purchased it. I've read it through twice, and I've got a few things to say. First and foremost, from a packaging standpoint, extremely solid, 277 pages, I believe, um, extremely nice cover, embossed, where it says, only death is real, this entire back picture is embossed. I absolutely love it. A uh, beautiful presentation. Uh, from a visual standpoint, you get lots of awesome stuff. You get pictures, just tons and tons of pictures. As it says, this is an illustrated history. And for the most part, this is a lot of pictures. Like, I don't want to say it's all pictures because you do get a lot of text, but there's a lot of stuff contained within it like where they practiced the Grave Hill Bunker which was underneath an elementary school you'll get lots of information contained within this and for me that's the beautiful part about this book is if you're a diehard fan of Tom like I am this is for you and even if you're not it's very interesting to hear the perspective of one of the most legendary bands in the history of metal kind of talk about their legacy and talk about what influenced them to create such extreme music without there being such extreme music out there. Um, it's very interesting to read for that portion alone, uh, to hear them talk about various member changes, Tom's childhood, Martin's upbringing, um, the demo recording sessions, the writing sessions, how nobody took them seriously how they kind of enjoyed the bad press because they kind of used it to their own advantage in a way. Um, of course, the bad press hurt, but there's no such thing as bad press, really, because either way, they're talking about them. And you really get that feeling from this book. <clears throat> uh, overall, this is an incredible book. I mean, with all this information, it goes into great detail, and it's almost hard to retain so much of it, which is why I read it twice before I did this. And I gotta say, I don't really have any complaints. The only part of the book that felt really, really uh, awkward, to say the least, was one chapter in particular, and I believe it was called Baphomet. Lilith and Baphomet, I believe the chapter's called. Um, yeah, Lilith and Bafflement. It's about this lovely young lady doing the Hitler salute, and it appears she has uh, hairy armpits. But, uh, yeah, it's a little odd. Uh, the entire chapter is pretty much Martin Eric Ain talking about uh, him losing his virginity to said uh, neo Nazi Satanist. And it's quite awkward to read, in the very least, but it's a very pivotal moment in his life when he finally rebelled against his mom and the church, because that was like the ultimate sin, and it kind of showed him becoming his own man, so to speak. So I understand the significance of it, which is why I'm not going to deduct any points. Uh, Tom wrote this in a very, in a very genuine fashion, very humbling standpoint. He never brags about how Hellhammer influenced people. He, for a long time, denied Hellhammer's influence and even denied pretty much Hellhammer's existence. He was so embarrassed by it because he felt like it was very immature, naive, and prepubescent, just angst. And 
he didn't really enjoy that, but thousands of people have around the world, and they continue to, and this book is a great celebration of that. Um, the wording that he uses is very natural for him, because he speaks in a very uh, intellectual sort of way. Um, just very good. Some people say the wording is a little too flowery. If you've ever read his blog post on his uh, blog spot, Fisher is Dead, I believe, uh, Delimitation 2, uh, that's a very good blog spot to read. And uh, if you are familiar with that, you'll be able to read this no problem. Um, very easy to read. It's a very good book to read. I can't recommend it enough. You get everything from the humorously over the top. Hellhammer promotional flyers that they sent out to their fan club members to the old Celtic Frost flyers. You get scans of those. Um, let me go back a little bit. You get scans of all the demos. The demo tape that never even happened. Um, you get to see the evolution of some of the logos. They'd go from Grave Hill to uh, from Hellhammer, Celtic Frost, Grave Hill, some bands that Tom did logos for. There's a scan of the contract that signed with Noise Records. Um, just some amazing stuff, some unreleased artwork over here. Uh, tons of stuff, and even one of my favorite sections actually is this is for the most part a black and white book, but you do get some full color photos and I love these but this is definitely a book that's worthy of a purchase on here it says it's forty dollars I found this for about twenty three dollars on Amazon definitely worth a buy definitely worth reading um, support Hellhammer, Tom, G Warrior, a bazillion points uh, definitely for putting out such an awesome book um, Ian Christie is awesome for doing all these books I want to get a uh, Metallia and the Slayer Diaries. So I may pick that up soon, do a review of that. But yeah, that's my review of this. It's a 10 out of 10. Uh, definitely worthy of a purchase. And uh, that's it, everyone. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And as always, keep it metal.